port on this computer. Awesome, we are recording. And hopefully, just a second here, someone will be able to verify we are live. But this is you... the there finals is. here of the Women's History Tournament hosted by Cassie Hankins, who we actually have in the stream. We've got Brett Robinson, we've got Cassie Hankins, and you've got, unfortunately, Brendan Borman here to bring you a 270 stream. Happy Easter to everybody. Um, happy Easter to both Brett and Cassie. Thank you guys for hopping on. I think this is Brett's first stream, maybe. So we'll get some okay. more information from that here soon. But first off, I want to turn it over to Cassie, who um, this is the first tournament that she's run. So I'll let her tell, talk about it. Um, all the good, all the bad, whatever she wants to see. And, and how did Eric York and how did Zach Algaze get to the finals? Yeah, um, thanks. So um, I had this idea probably a couple of months ago to um, run a tournament for Women's History Month. Um, it, it started out as kind of maybe doing like an all women's tournament. I was like, there's probably not enough females in the lounge to do that. So I was like, what if I just use all the women candidates? Um, I got Jeremy Cooper Sperber on board to help me co-commission just so that I would have another name that the lounge might recognize since I am still kind of new. Um, and then I just kind of started to take account of all of the female candidates that were in the game at the time that we started, which was at the beginning of March. Um, and it actually worked out pretty well between the Republican and independent candidates. There were exactly 16. Um, and there were a little more than 16 on the Democrat side. So I kind of just weeded out a couple of names, <laughs> mostly at my own discretion. Um, and cross my fingers and hope that people would sign up for a tournament um, run by a newbie and y'all did. Um, so we are down to Eric York, uh, who is playing with Amy Klobuchar and Zach Elgaze, who is playing with uh, Nikki Haley 2024. Um, Zach beat out some uh, fairly big names to get here. Um, he beat Richard Gadd um, and Jeff Ray. Richard was playing with Queen Elizabeth. Jeff Ray was playing with Kellyanne Conway. Um, Eric York um, beat out Alex Eastman with a Shirley Chisholm. And he also beat out Hasib Mohammed, mm -hmm. who was playing with Michelle Obama. Um, and I saw Hasib, the one right there. Yeah, and Hasib was um, the number one seed on the Democrat side of our uh, bracket. So that was... Um, I think a pretty significant win for him. It definitely kind of goes to show um, the skill of skill of the player, mm -hmm. you know, even against um, a candidate like Michelle um, in the game. So. All those people you mentioned are super great candidates, um, are super great players. The only one who I don't know all that well was Alex Eastman. I don't know his game that well, but he's intelligent and has his candidate model and um, – I know that his model would suggest that Nikki Haley 2024 is a really fantastic candidate. I'm going to pull, pull up her profile. We have already submitted our turn. We are doing five minute timers. Um, these guys are taking their time here, crunching numbers in the old South. And that is where we find ourselves. So Nikki Haley has a 30% bonus. Um, when you look at Amy uh, Kolbachar here, she does have a 15% penalty. So I'll let the, players make their move it looks like Haley is going to pivot to swing states which is probably not a bad idea um but that's not what i would have done um in that situation but it is what Haley's going to do so um Haley is played by algaze correct yes so zach is deciding to pivot and amy is not going to pick up her bonus so that that old south bonus you know one of the one of the perks of getting that is getting that in, on turn two or being able to get that before your opponent gets swing um who do you guys like in this in this spot right now as we speak yes uh i know zach has always had eh, a, a bit of a tendency for swing he's an old south swing guy but i also know he can be very unpredictable but 
I I just always thought it's a bad idea to let Eric get either swing or sell in the beginning. I mean, really, either one, he's just that dangerous. If you let him get either or. Oh, did he freeze? You might have froze, but that's okay. But you're you're right. I'll pick up where you left off. Um, however, Amy it looks like a, he's going to get at least one. Yeah, he's going to get one. They're they're each going to get one. But if you give the way I like to think of the old South to swing ratio, if you were to play like a Marco Rubio or someone doesn't have a penalty or a bonus, that's a mm-hmm. hundred thousand swing, fifty k of old South. That's a two to one ratio. If you give Haley her a hundred and Twenty-five thousand dollars of swing, and you give Amy um, her, her um, net. She has a negative fifteen percent old south, so she's actually going to get you know less than fifty k. That's almost a three to one ratio. Um, so that's definitely a big edge to swing and all to to the swing states and Zach. Also, without Florida, New York is going to become must get territory for um, Eric York. And while that's great, he can do it. He can get town and gown. He can get high tech. He can get AA out of New York. Ain't, um, it was a little bit. Yeah. Dude, I, dude, I, Sorry, you're good. I was breaking up a, a little bit. My apologies. You're good. While, while you do that. Um, I mean, Zach will know that and we'll be able to either save money or kind of combat that. So um, mm-hmm. definitely, definitely something to watch here. Before the match started, I would have favored Eric slightly. Zach can beat anybody. But do you guys share that same sentiment? Uh, I think, like I said, I think Eric can beat damn near anyone in the lounge. All right. Um, Zach is, from what I've understood, is kind of still up and coming recently. And um, I feel like in a game like this, Eric has all the pressure. He should win this game, which I think does benefit Zach a small amount. But Eric did recently get the monkey off his back. He did win a championship recently because you know how he went on that stretch of like four or five runner-ups where he just tear through the bracket and then he, for lack of better words, choke in the final. (laughs) He got that monkey off his back a couple days ago. So we could be looking at a completely refreshed Eric, for lack of better words. There you go. And again, at the same time, I, I do think more pressure is on Eric in this specific match than yeah. Zach. Well, I can speak to the pressure because I know that I'm expected to win every single match I play. And, <laughs> right. And, and then you get everyone's, you know, best efforts or sneaky plays or whatever. But, I mean, to be fair, I ranked Zach 12th in my power rankings back in February. I had Eric 7th. So, I mean, <laughs> it's, it's not that big of a gap. Um, in comparison. So I do think that, um, you know, the candidate definitely favors Zach. Um, but yes. It'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see here. Do you guys almost feel like Eric is like trolling people half the time when he picks his candidates? You ever notice he'll just pick like these middle of the road candidates and just do, he's in the TLC with um, ACB, is he not? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, I've never. Really- Colin Barrett. Or how are you saying? Yeah. I've never really participated in those tournaments. Those are well done and, and well run by Chad yeah. Chris. Um, yeah. But I just – that's one thing I've just kind of st- stayed clear of just because I have my plate pretty full with life and with 270 as it is. But I you know, I, I've noticed that Eric does choose candidates that are maybe mid-tier. Um, but I think that that makes him more calculated and more, um, you know, risk-averse because he has to play – you know, within the margins, he can't rely on a Michelle Obama's giant African-American bonus or high tech right. to bail him out. So while his bonuses are, are not his, his uh, moves are sometimes based off of intuition. It's mm-hmm. generally math based because that's the most efficient way to play. So as you can see, turn three comes to an end here. Electors is pretty close, but there are the two bonuses. So old South 42 and a half thousand. Um, with versus swing states 125. So I do think this is going to be a rare game where Florida pressure is not going to be real um, unless unless Zach you know doesn't you know over exerts his swing trying to get manufacturing and doesn't kind of save that. I think that Zach um, will 
pretty much be in a driver's seat and can dictate, you know, how he wants to go into Texas, get oil and gas manufacturing and ag, you know, with, with access to swing in Wisconsin and North Carolina that gives the manufacturing ag. Um, he's already got that money coming in. And, you know, while Eric had a big cash advantage with $200,000, think, you know, Gary V made that comment. Um, it's already turned to, he had that advantage. It's already gone, you know, 394 yep. to 392. Because Eric, just like I thought, he felt the pressure to preemptively get into New York. Don't let Zach try to clash and, and put you a whole nother turn behind and rack up swing dollars. So, um, Cassie, I know I've, I've uh, seen you in the lounge and, and we've had discussions, whether it be um, some various community tournaments or Survivor, but um, what kind of strategy do you like to play as? Do you like, do you like going for swing states or do you like playing out in New York? Um, it's interesting because so my, I guess because I'm still new, I would argue that my, my strategy is kind of still evolving to some effect. Um, I was a part of one of the very early on um, RHL the choice mm -hmm. um, and I got mentored by Troy Moore and I learned a lot there but I also got myself stuck in this rut of um, like going town and gown into high tech because if you do that you get stuck in California and New York and there's not a lot of room to grow there um, so I learned pretty quick that I was going to have to figure out something else because it just wasn't a winning strategy um survivor helped me out a lot um i played a lot of games with sapun leonage in that um he taught me or attempted to teach me the art of saving your money um didn't teach you how to say his name that was good there you go um but yeah it, learning how to save money i think that's really like once you learn how to save and when to spend i think that's really how you more than even state groups that's really the key that yeah. I haven't unlocked yet. It's it's so definitely like, it's, spectrum. Go ahead. Sorry, Brett. Uh, you're you're good. I I dropped out and I jumped back in. So you, oh, you're, so you probably I, heard somebody else in the room. So go ahead. I was just gonna say I I completely agree with Cassie's sentiment. And it's not something that you can just flip a switch and um, learn overnight. But you know when when enough people do it to you and put you in an awkward position of oh crap do I save money do I do I spend money? Do I go all in in Florida and defend? Do I try to steal it now or do I wait? Um, I know Eric is probably top, I'll say top five, because there's just, I tell you what, there's so many good players in the lounge these days where, um, you know, it's hard to say anyone's the best, but you will not find Eric York overspending um, in very many situations unless he thinks it is absolutely necessary. But um, you can over this, you can overspend in, in defending, you can overspend in attacking, and you can you can technically over over save. I mean, it's it's human nature to um, defend and take the guaranteed steal. And sometimes if if you catch your opponent off guard and you know can not only take away a bonus but get a bonus for you for even if it's just for a turn, like that can snowball exponentially and. You know, I, I keep a, um, a documented um, Excel drive where I document all of my matches that I have and tendencies and, and records against people. And so, um, you know, Eric York is someone I've played um, five times. I'm four and one against, four wins and one loss. And really? He is one of the very few players that I don't have anything down as a tendency <laughs> because he's just that unpredictable. But I'll say that he is generally going to take the um, weight, kind of the Sapun Linganaj book that Cassie can relate to is live to fight another day. You know, don't take the, the risk on this turn because how can I prolong the game to be in it in the end? And sometimes, you know, if you can get to the ballot, even if you have like three state groups to their seven, that may sound like extreme. But if their if their bonuses entail like ag and export and you know Latino and you have some of the bigger bonuses and you have a bunch of cash, you can definitely um, overcome that. So it looks like Haley might have successfully no okay that Virginia steal was clutch. Um, so what happened on that turn was Haley went for the old South bonus, 
Um, and although she did take it away successfully from Globachar, um, that Virginia still at the very end kept the bonus from going to Hayward. So even if that's for a turn, that 30% bonus, you know, that's that's pretty key. Plus Haley herself, um, she does have options. So she's got South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, and, and Louisiana that she can go toward. Again, keep in mind that 130000 of that is swing. And then Amy also has um, plenty of options, counting down, high tech, African American, Old South. And so um, Eric is doing the pro move. This is something that I learned at a very um, late development in my 270 career that, you know, you do not always have to go up in New York prematurely because, yes, while New York is so critical and he won't likely get a bonus until he gets that, every single dollar is going to matter. And he can use that to, to fight the old South. He can use that to possibly take away swing states. He can use that to leverage here in the Rust Belt in the manufacturing states. And it's, it's kind of quite remarkable that both these players on turn six have full access to the old South. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to ask you guys again, right now, who do you favor and why? Cass, you want to take the lead on this one? Yeah, I, honestly, I'm going to go Eric, just because like you said, he's got so much that he can play with right now, but between that high tech and that, um, what, how, what kind of a bonus does Amy have for high tech? 10%. One? 10%. I mean, that's still... That's decent. 10K, like that's not terrible. Mm -hmm. um, and with no plus or minus on the African American bonus, that's also another 100K bonus. So I do I think, think that, Eric's setting himself up for something good. Yeah. I do think that personally, Eric's going to need both of those bonuses if he's going to win. Um, just off of the, I, I would say that there is a strong chance, 60 or 60% 60 or greater, that. Uh, old south flips this turn to Haley. if Haley can rack up the old south even if it's you know becomes a useless bonus here in the end game a it'll make it harder for eric to track funds b um it'll help combat against that aa bonus and like cassie was mentioning earlier you can sometimes get in a rut if you go towning down the high tech like once what's the next pivot point and if it's a equal aa old south versus counting on high tech in with Haley's bonus, that's going to be edge Zach because that money can be used to go into manufacturing, into um, oil and gas. And so there's the third pip. It looks like we're going to have the town and gown play, which was probably the safest route. He just needed to get some money coming in. So 78K, which again, he went Utah, Massachusetts. Those are uncontested. However, he can use those funds on the next turn in a state like Arizona in a state like District of Columbia that are both African-American states. And so definitely a pro move there by Eric. Um, We've got um, Jeffrey in the comments asking if we could go through the bonuses for each of these since um, they're newer. Yeah, no problem. Just unfamiliar. Yeah, so the start off with Haley 2024, oil and gas 20%. Um, that's going to be a mid-game bonus once Haley establishes herself, most likely in Texas. High Tech makes Haley a very unique and strong Republican candidate. Having that 15% bonus is, is great. Kind of gives her flexibility in Texas and in California, 15% ag, 20% manufacturing. Likely the reason why Haley will choose to go Texas because she'll unlock the ag and manufacturing and oil and gas through Texas versus just oil and manufacture or just oil and ag, excuse me, in California. Um, she does have 25% swing states, which is unlocked by having an aggregate of $200,000 uh, of control in the swing states, which is right now occupied through Florida, Pennsylvania, Colorado, and Arizona. There is some pressure right now in Arizona um, and in North Carolina, but North Carolina is, is uh, you know, extra. So, you know, just with Florida, North Carolina, and Pennsylvania, that would be enough also. So swing states, I would say, is safe. Send the season. If you look here at um, Amy, Amy does have 10% high tech, does have a neutral town and gown. Um, so, no, 5% town and gown. So very minimal bonus 
And so New York gives access to the, the major bonuses of high tech, counting down African American export and Latino. And so because of his position in the map, Illinois and Michigan are currently um, both pressured in, but right now Amy has control. Um, so look for, you know, it's kind of, I would say a misstep for Amy not to be in Wisconsin right now, because if Amy was in Wisconsin, not Amy, um, Nikki Haley, excuse me. If Zach was in Wisconsin, he could actually make a legitimate case to get that manufacturing bonus. And Eric, I feel like would have to have to overspend in one of Illinois or Michigan, probably Michigan because of the high tech. Um, but right now, you know, I, I don't disagree that Eric's in a, you know, in a good spot. Um, he's definitely not in a bad spot, but I would, I think I'd rather be in, in Haley's shoes right now. Um, I feel like if I was parachuted down into the game, I had to choose right now who I'd be, I would be Haley. Is that or Stein? Jill Stein's got 1.75 million. I would double tap, <laughs> I'd double tap Texas and California and New Mexico, and I'd get oil and gas and ag and, and Latino. Yeah, and, then I would, <laughs> and I would go after Florida, and then I would go after New York. <laughs> but that's what you call illegal. I could be a, a dreamer streamer. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's ever actually, you probably would have heard about it all over the lounge if somebody did something like that. Um, you start pipping in the middle of a game. <laughs> no, but one time um, I, on the ballot turn, I had like $3 million and I double tapped all the states. And I, oh, uh, you know, I, ac I actually accidentally blocked someone in Montana. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't matter because it was, you know, it wasn't a close game, but mm -hmm. it was kind of funny. So you can actually, uh, how many turns into the game were you? uh 17 somewhere in there it was it was a longer game so if you save and don't spend for 17 turns you can double pip every single state it might have yeah it might have been like single <laughs> state the big the big states but like all the little ones i was double tapping oh yeah okay there, there's a louisiana flip there's a michigan Ooh, play okay so we are not going to see there's the wisconsin move so haley like i mentioned you know putting some pressure down on the manufacturing we did see oh Haley get the african-american bonus mm. Ooh, okay so that is definitely that was a edge. good turn for zach yeah definitely edge yeah, it was zach um no pressure in florida so it looks like we had a failed attempt um to steal arizona which i'm gonna end my turn early in case these guys are ready but aa is actually pretty pretty safe here um mm. You know what I, I, you know, I hate, I, I, um, I like giving my thoughts on this part of the game, but I also don't like it because I don't want anyone to be influenced. I don't know if you guys have ever felt that way watching a stream and, and, um, you know, I, I have felt that when I was playing someone who they maybe Javier was streaming and I felt like I was like, I was playing against a lower level guy and Javier's like, if I was in this guy's shoes, yeah. I, this is what I would do. I go, gosh, dang it. Now I have to think if this is reverse psychology or is that player actually like going to make that move? <laughs> and so I'm kind of, are hesitant. they even listening, you know? Yeah, it, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I'm kind of hesitant to say what I would do here, but I will say that uh, if you guys have watched some of my YouTube videos, the, the Oasis strategy, having the old South African-American swing state, that's where Haley is right now. She has Oasis. And while there is pressure and I'll highlight that, all across the board. Eric has access to plenty of states. He does have 588,000. So he did, you know, keep his um, towning out bonus. So that was good. He has access to high tech. He does have mm -hmm. access to old South. He does have access to African-American, but a, uh, um, Haley is in a position where it's pretty predictable where possible attacks come from. And if Haley wants to, she can pretty much defend everywhere. So this goes back to what would I do? Um, I honestly would, I wouldn't say zero spend, but I have fallen in the trap where I have had Oasis, these three bonuses, 
and I have been three cornered so many times. And that is when someone gets mm. Texas, California, and New York. Now, that AA bonus, that can definitely, definitely, definitely be used to pressure New York. Mm-hmm. And that could happen sooner rather than later. If Haley somehow comes up with the nerve to pressure New York sooner rather than later, that's going to even force Eric to make his move before he wants to make it. Do you see Zach making a move like that in this game? I don't know what I see. Zach can can honestly just go up in Wisconsin, go up in, you know, there's no pressure in Ohio, there's pressure in Michigan, there's pressure in North Carolina, and there's pressure in Illinois. I think that Zach is gonna wa- is probably gonna defend Illinois, probably gonna defend Michigan, probably gonna defend North Carolina, and go up in Wisconsin, get his manufacturing bonus, let that money kind of trickle trickle in. That way, he can funnel it to Texas. You saw, okay, hey man, I'm- yeah, and and if he gets it, great. If not, you know, he's probably gonna force Eric to to overspend. Now, where could Eric? overspend that it still makes sense i think it's michigan because if he can get um so he's gonna do he's gonna low spend here so one pip into florida okay zach overreacts zach went not 10 pips in michigan and versus locked it up Hmm. so it's locked now you are going to see a wisconsin flip here and wisconsin is going to give him uh, not flip it secure to the third pip that's going to get it going to give him blah manufacturing now that's 90k that's a fourth bonus, like I said, to, to one. Um, but can Haley double tap Texas? Thank you. Um, I assume so. I assume so. It'll be 250 plus the 90. Three. Am I missing <laughs> something? So 250 plus the 90 plus any cash that he didn't spend last turn. Yeah, that third is. He would have need, that. That goes back to what Cassie was talking about. He would have needed to like predict that I need to spend. I need to save like an extra, you know, what is that, 60k of cash? And and so yep, yep. Um, mm-hmm. while it's possible, maybe he didn't. So I think that if if Eric thinks that he didn't, then I would. I would seriously consider double tapping Texas. As or, Eric? Um, Eric, yeah. Or um, in single tapping California. Or, you know, right now, this Florida pressure is absolutely real. Um, this is really a make or break turn of this match. Um, Eric can go after. He can go after. You know, I think Pennsylvania makes a lot of sense because of high tech. Now that you've cut off that that Michigan pressure, uh, maybe like a maybe is like Nikki, a Maryland. Is Amy, I was gonna say, it's Amy in Maryland because that would be another high yeah. tech. Story. Maryland and and AA also. But if I'm if I am Haley, I'm probably left Maryland. Well, let me ask you a question, Brendan. If yeah. if let's say you're Eric, okay, and you double pip Texas. Let's say they both double pick, pick Texas. If, you double, if they both double pip, it's game over. Um, okay. All right. In my opinion, it's a it's a high risk, high reward move. Illinois flips by two pips. That is massive. Eric guessed right. He already flipped, wow. he already flipped Arizona. So manufacturing is going away for a turn. Uh, Pennsylvania was defended. However, um, Texas is entered into by Zach. So saving grace is even though AA and manufacturing go out the door, um, he does have a single pip advantage in Texas. So the idea of getting three cornered is basically out the window. Now, he did call his bluff in Florida. So that's what you call diamond hands. Three pips to one pip here in Florida. Pennsylvania was defended. So Zach was maybe envisioning that high, excuse me, the high tech push. Look, more diamond hands in Maryland. That's crazy. So we'll go back to the I'm state. Learning group. so much terminology. What is what is diamond hands? I Three know, to I've one. I've never heard that phrase before. Diamond hands is like the um, terminology used in the stock market. Whenever, um, let's say you buy a bunch of Game Stock for a um, Game Stop stock for like ten dollars, and it goes up to sixty dollars, and then you you know, and then it plummets all the way back down to $30. 
and you know you could have made all this money but you're going to lose money diamond hands is where you like you weather the storm you don't sell it paper hands is where you you know like kind of what happened in michigan's you go all out to defend it. That's, you know, that's paper hands. That's the opposite of diamond hands. Um, hmm. Okay. It's, it's just like, you know, you're, it's like, it's like um, right now, if, if Amy did not defend Illinois and that would be diamond hands <laughs> in my opinion. Now for Zach, for, uh, for Eric, um, if, he, Eric oh. if Eric takes this for granted, and it could work out. He could save some money. It may not work out. Um, but that is diamond hands if he does not um, does not spin there. Oh, okay. Does that makes right. sense? Yeah. So I've just never heard it put like that before. That's okay. Interestingly enough, um, I do expect uh, Eric's town and gown to be spent in D.C. and in New Hampshire this turn because he does not have high tech. He does not have AA. And he's already locked up two of the most... Um, uh, cost-effective states in Virginia and Arizona. We look here at Illinois again, eyes on Illinois, um, eight pips to six pips. And then let's focus on, you know, really, um, Zach did a great job of giving him the option of getting that oil and gas bonus, although he is going to need Louisiana. And Louisiana is facing pressure. Let's see what happens. Got a big spin here from um, both players. It looks like just a double pip into Cali. So looks like a lot of defense here from Zach. And actually, Nikki Haley is going up in New Hampshire. So Nikki Haley is going to get ag, going to get manufacturing, and going to get oil and gas. So great turn. And mm -hmm. AA. So I, I um, kind of discounted that AA push. I'll have to go back in and look and see what was grabbed for African-American um there's a great rebound from loose great rebound from losing wow. illinois so gotta look here what what did she what did she get that was not was it just old south states yeah it looks i mean she's only missing mississippi and i mean look at that look at that razor razor thin so for those of you who don't know you need three hundred and thirty thousand dollars worth of aa and so if that was the turn that Eric went for Florida, that would have been pretty, mm -hmm. pretty, pretty crazy. And it would have most likely worked. Would um, it have taken um, swing is no. She, it, she, it, it would not have taken swing, but it would have taken away AA, would have prevented export, would have prevented agriculture. Um, and it would have put Eric on the doorstop of getting that, AA bonus. So he would have needed with uh with El see that so with Illinois and New York, that's 200, 224, 248.5. So yeah, with, with Florida right there, instead of if, if Eric goes three pips in Florida instead of two pips in California, Eric has African American. Eric um you know, probably feels the pressure of the problem is he wasn't in Cali at all. And so he cannot do what I was talking about earlier and let Zach have Texas and California. So that's really what that move was about. So um, we do have Florida defense. These he, guys are he making defend Florida. Yeah. Defended Florida and Illinois was successfully defended. So um, that actually doesn't hurt Zach all that much. He has that ag, he has that um, export money and ag money. All of that money can just be put there. His swing money went into Florida. And now you're going to see some states like North Carolina and um, Pennsylvania, those high EVs just kind of creep further and further away from Eric as this game progresses. Haley's already up to 256 electors, um, 259 now. And some pressuring in some of these export states as well, like Washington. So I would say that from this point on, if these guys played 20 times, I think Eric's only going to win about twice um, from this, this standpoint. Now, could it be turned around? Absolutely. Um, he should get Latino. Um, let's see. Yeah, Latino to go along with his high tech. So that's the good thing about locking – 
Arizona early is that you just basically need one of Illinois or New Jersey to get that Latino bonus, or, you know, you can do the classical um, California, New York, um, Nevada, and New Jersey, which are both um, unoccupied at this standpoint. Now, Amy has 584. That Latino does bring Florida back into play. And really, um, this is kind of Hail Mary time if you are Eric. I think that Eric's mindset is to wait and, you know, take what is available. But Zach has done a good job of steadily defending outside of Michigan. And every turn that this goes on, he's going to be exponentially that much further behind. So two things have to come into his thought process. How can I end this game as fast as possible, which is great. However, he's already down 264 to 196. So that's not going to work um, mm -hmm. because even if he does force a ballot here, he still loses. So right now, how can I flip several bonuses? Well, if we look at the bonuses, AA, that would be a $200,000 net swing if he can take away 100 and get 100. So to me, right off the hop, that is the captain obvious move. Oil and gas. Um, Zach did a great job of setting himself up self, setting himself up and getting that bonus. But last turn, if he got up in Louisiana, he could have taken away oil and gas and prevented AA. So that is a turn where, yes, it was risky, he was up on the seventh pip, but it may have been worth it to just go after that. Maybe defend Illinois, you know, but that comes back to the, hey, I don't have any bonuses. I'm not to the third pip in California yet. It's kind of weighing the pros and cons of how can I take away bonuses, but also get bonuses. But, um, you know, that, that was maybe a, a thing where if he had a crystal ball and can predict, he would go back and lock Louisiana and then go up this turn in California and get those bonuses because then it would have been what uh, like six bonuses to two and not, not three. I mean, that Latino bonus is great, but what is that? 75,000 plus Amy gets a little bit of a bonus. Um, no, she's Latino's neutral, neutral, neutral. So 75,000. I mean, that's great, but that, you know, where, where are you going to use that Florida, you know, because that's, um, you know, Illinois, these are, these are places where your opponent also already has bonuses. So got another low spin here from Amy. Um, looks like he's just positioning himself. Um, Zach doing the right thing, continuing the pressure, Illinois going to see a lock here from Louisiana after I highlighted, of course, how important it was <laughs> uh, Mississippi flips. So all but assuring that Old South is going to be safe for the rest of the game. Same with African-American. There's the New York pressure. Woo, woo, sirens going off here in Eric's head. Um, almost a lock to the eighth pip in Pennsylvania. Um, we do have a lock or a steal actually in South Carolina. Um, so that will quite possibly flip AA. I was curious if Eric was going to go after a less obvious. No, it did not. It did not. Flip it just it. wasn't enough. It took it away. Because well, uh, uh, Zach take, took uh, Mississippi, right? It took it took the AA away. It did not. It did not um, give it because yeah, no one was in Tennessee. So, so AA is gone. However, there's still pressure now in New York. So, mm. oof, uh -oh. oof. Now, I will say. He did use his swing that turn in, in Pennsylvania, but how much of this money is Old South? He's been spending that. I mean, there's really not a whole lot of money he's um, been leaving on the table. So, I mean, really, that, that extra 100K that Eric's having to spend in Illinois really hampers him. Now, 75 of that can be Latino. So, another 25,000 of that is pure cash. So, that's, that's limiting him in cash to 225 per turn versus where Haley has 250 because she can use all of her, um, well, she lost AA, but she still has manufacturing. She still has export and she still has ag. So she can use all those bonuses and just devote that to Illinois and make, make Amy have to block at every turn. To me, that's a cost effective, that's a win for Haley. Even if she doesn't get those EVs in the end, you no, know, that's going to be super critical. 
Um, we look at the to total outreach. There's a ton of states that Eric is not in yet, including, you know, Indiana, Kentucky, New Jersey, Nevada, some some mid-level EVs, Ohio, Wisconsin. Haley is more spread out. She has time to kind of get into the, the cheap states. She has her um, ag money. She can get in uh, Minnesota. Of course, you know, Montana, she'll be in before the, the game is over. Uh, we do have a flip of Alabama. So it looks like, oh, do we have a, we have a New York steal? 900K. Mm. Got a failed attempt in DC. Florida. Okay, we've got a spin there. Illinois. Illinois is locked. Okay, we might be seeing a ballot push with a combination of a New York. Something. Ha okay, oh, I got a, that was big. Big failed attempt there in Maryland. That was actually a really decent turn for Amy up until the Maryland play. Well, Maryland would have pulled away. No. Maryland, yeah, Maryland. Flipped, Maryland would have flipped Old South yep. and AA. Now, electoral wise, we are way up there. Um, So AA goes back to Haley. That is freaking close. So um, let's look at that. Look at this. <laughs> that's the game. I mean, that's like that's Delaware. I mean, that's that's, that's the game. DC. <laughs> yeah, that's that is the that is the margins we're talking about here. So if Eric were somehow somehow. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's over. Yeah, it's it's over. You don't you don't see him at, at all. No, possible. I don't I don't I don't see a path. Zach's probably too good to let that happen. <clears throat> I mean, look at the money advantage now nine nine twenty nine to six sixty two. Mm -hmm. EV. And Amy has high tech town and gown high. I mean. You got to think that Maryland gets locked again. This is the rut I was talking about that I that I found myself getting stuck in all the time. When you have just New York and California, you don't have anywhere else to go. Yeah. So um, I just beat uh, Siraj Thomas last night. It was probably one of the top five craziest games i've ever played it was in the atp the second round um and i started off one pipping new york that is something that you will hear top players say don't do and i don't do it but maybe 10 percent of the time part of it was <laughs> candidate um selection he was crooked hillary and i was michelle obama um crooked hillary was my opponent mm. and he to me, I felt like he had to have New York to be like an A-level candidate, whereas I could kind of pivot. And so I wanted to have New York access. If we would have clashed, great, I can pivot, you know, have that, that access. But he ended up going into women's movement. And I had New York. And I ended up getting Town and & Gown. And same thing, Town & Gown, Gown, the high tech. And I was constantly pressured. I don't think I made a misstep at all. I actually played – pretty great because he tried to predict where I was going to go. And instead of going traditional routes, I picked other combinations to avoid a conflict. And mm -hmm. that's what, you know, he wants to do with the, with the national group advantage, but I had, it was turn seven. I had town and gown and high tech versus his old South swing AA and women's movement. And that sounds like I'm behind and you could debate that I was maybe behind, but I didn't want to overcommit, kind of like Eric did. I could have, I, I was in all the old South states. I had one pip in California, but I didn't go up in California because I wanted to use my high tech money and not pure cash. Kind of like with New York, you can go up in New York too soon, you know, if it, if it doesn't get you a bonus. Mm -hmm. You know, if you have just town and in high tech, if you go up in California, it doesn't give you anything. You know, it doesn't give if, you anything. If you already have them. If you already exactly. have high, yeah, if you already have high tech, it doesn't give you anything. So mm -hmm. that kind of comes back to, 
you know, how can you set yourself up? And, you know, I prefer to get high tech without California and New York, just because it's not the most efficient way to do it. Um, but you really have to prioritize Arizona and Illinois and Florida and, and Michigan and Pennsylvania, some of these other states. I tell you which candidate really helped me grow the most out of playing out of California, and that's FDR. Because FDR has such a great high-tech manufacturing, export. I mean, you can play literally any any possible route with FDR. Um, you can play them out of New York or Florida. You know, swing states, it's maybe not the most efficient. But if you just add like, you know, um, if you just have the four states of of uh, let's see here let's do if you have illinois pennsylvania texas and um california brett what bonus is that does that give you illinois pennsylvania texas california well texas california gives you oil and gas if you add in illinois that what was the fourth state again pennsylvania you'd have o oil gas it doesn't get you latino it would. No, no, it does give you Latino because that's would 450. You, it, would it give you ag? You would get ag with just with just California. Just, yeah. California Texas you get you ag. Uh, oh, you would get export as no, you would you not. Would yeah, you would get export. You would export. You'd also get manufacturing. Manufacturing, yeah. Holy cow. I'm you just get, saying it, there there are tons of ways to play this game and, and yeah. And uh, you can work forwards, you can work backwards. But it's the same critical, like fifteen or, or eighteen states that you know you can win without some of them. You, I, I posted two screenshots in the lounge recently of I won matches, back to back matches, without winning any of the big four. <laughs> it was really hard, and it honestly, like both of the matches, I was winning like Florida and Texas or or one of them California before the ballot and. Mm -hmm. They were so far behind. They just like zero spent, zero spent, zero spent on the ballot. They would take it. And that's fine. You know, you can have California. You can spend 1.6 million for California. I'll just take everything else. <laughs> right, right. Um, but it looks pretty cool on a screenshot, you know. Uh, there's a, I don't, I think the player was probably garbage, but one of my favorite screenshots is a game I won where I didn't have not just the big four, but I didn't have. I didn't have Illinois, I didn't have Ohio, I didn't have Pennsylvania, and I didn't have North Carolina. I don't know how I ended up winning, but I ended up winning the game. Literally, so you didn't have California, Texas, New York, Florida, Illinois, Ohio, Pennsylvania, or North Carolina. Yeah. Now, anyone who's worth their salt would never lose that game, but it's it was kind of interesting that you can win without having all those states. It's just almost impossible to not have the state at one point throughout the game. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, this game is winding down here. This is the ballot turn. Mm -hmm. um, Cassie, uh, I know you put some hard work into this, and, and you know, coordinated tournament is never easy. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any uh, final thoughts before uh, we get to the ballot round? Uh, no, just, I mean, I, I remember early on when there were still signups happening, um, asking Jeremy, I said, does it ever get old when people actually want to do your things? Cause he's done a lot and he's like, no, it never gets old. <laughs> um, so I, I just appreciated all, all the love. Like I was, I was really expecting to have to pull hard once I was down to just like a couple of those really kind of obscure candidates to get, um, mm -hmm. to get somebody pulled in and, and I, I had enough people and I had alternates. Um, so it, it's, I definitely felt the love for my, my first one and I I can't say I'll do it again soon, not because it was a bad thing, but just because I don't got any other ideas. Um, right. And but, I will say, it, and it's okay if other people borrow ideas from other people. Like there's, you know, they're, they're, the lounge has been around, there've been community tournaments. Like it's not going to be a ton of like original ideas. It is common courtesy to ask um, other, you know, other people if they've run something, but not everyone knows like what has gone on in the lounge. Like we all haven't been around since day one. So the good thing is like Cassie, we all like this game and we're trying to provide a, a tournament that we all can enjoy. We can watch, you know, you may not have been in this tournament, but maybe you spent the last hour or so watching this match and that's a cool thing. So um, keep that in mind when you're signing up for things, be care, be um, 
considerate of commissioners and you know what if you feel like running something where you know the lounge is always looking for you know more tournaments more streamers you know i've uh, got a little guy at home he's 14 months and you know i i don't get to spend as much time streaming and playing as i would like to or i used to and even like you know a year ago flashback to you know a typical sunday night even if it's easter like i would probably have three hours of streams going on and that was fun you know also Oh man, these one pips clash in New Jersey and a clash in um, Washington. That could have been, it wouldn't have uh, flipped the game, but that would have been, it made it a little bit more respectable. But um, yeah, you know, things, you know, things, life happens and we can't take things for granted, especially in the 270 world. So, um, mm -hmm. and you definitely can't take for granted Zach Algay's beating um, mm -hmm. Eric York. Take a screenshot of this, um, Zach. You may have to use it later. <laughs> <laughs> Right. I wonder what uh, how many times they have played all time. I know, I know, both of them probably know that. I'm just kind of curious what it is. Yeah, I don't, I don't know that off the top of my head. Um, but that is a Zach Algay's victory. Yes, sir. A solid and legitimate and convincing victory. I would say so, although I will say that, man, some of those moves by Eric were pretty top-notch, those AA. I think that Zach um, – I think Zach legitimately used the bonuses to his benefit and was able to snowball those to give him a, a an advantage. And do I think that, you know, Zach wins in this exact same scenario if he had a weaker candidate? Probably. But it would have been a little bit harder. And when you're talking about the margins of those AA being less than five thousand, you know, like a Delaware or a DC, mm -hmm. then those can definitely come into play. So kudos to Eric for making it this far with Amy. But big congratulations to Zach Algaze and Nikki Haley, 2024. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. That way we can still see everybody. Hey, <laughs> and um. Let's see. Let's hop on. Let's see if anyone wants to join um, like a post game interview here. Let's see if we can get Eric. Um, oh, okay. All right. Get, me, if you can get them both, that would be even better. But yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm gonna message the group chat here. Okay. I know Eric might be a little salty. I know sometimes when I lose, I'm like, eh, I'm good. You guys can just talk about me. That's okay. Someone Dude. murder me, please. <laughs> what, 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 what's going on? <laughs> this group chat is blowing up. So I'm on MSN, or not MSN, that's right, throwing it way back to like the 2000s there. I'm on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> I was talking about um, like two days ago how well, I used to come home like from like eighth grade. I'd get on MSN Messenger. And, oh yeah, A A AIM, AIM, AOL. Yeah. AIM. So so Eric's gonna hop on here. He's a good sport. Um, oh my! Oh, we got Eric. Okay. And Zach can't Zach unfortunately. Can. So. Okay, I, I got to get a beer for this. Hold on. All right, you do that. Um, I'm gonna stick to my Dr Pepper. I am not sponsored, but I should be. <laughs> Twenty. <laughs> okay. okay. Had, That's fine. Popcorn. I don't know if that gets me anything. That's why yeah. I was muted so much during this because I didn't want y'all to hear me just crunch yeah, that popcorn. Any, yeah, crackle pop. There's the Big E. We've got Eric York himself joining into the stream. So, um, Eric, I know we can't see you. You're probably crying yourself to sleep right now. Um, but can we hear you? You can hear me. There you go. Um, good game. Um, I don't know if you had the stream on or not um, and was listening, but it the Remember. margins there were extremely, extremely tight, especially in AA and Old yeah. South. Um, like, were you mm -hmm. expecting Were you expecting um, Zach to pivot the swing? Yeah, I thought about the second turn just to pipping Florida because he always goes swing and it was predictable, but I didn't, and he just snowballed it from there. He had bigger bonuses in swing and old, and swing specifically, um, and I just didn't defend well enough in old south. And once he took that, 
and snowballed into AA and snowballed into manufacturing. It was just tough and for ag, me to, and export. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it was just right. tough for me to, to keep up. I think I made it interesting at the end. I almost stole AA back, but um, you yeah, did too much. I thought he made. I thought Eric made AA a lot closer than it ever should have been. So, big yeah, credit and, to and Eric's that. pretty good about that. Where he'll 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 give like he'll he will be there to the last dog dies. And I know Eric's not one to forfeit. Um, so, you know he and he actually, actually even if, if he flips New Jersey by one and Washington by one, even though he doesn't win, like. All of a sudden, you know that's twenty six for a while. Yeah. How much did you lose by? It was you had you had three sixteen or something three. Uh, something like that, three sixteen maybe. So I mean, you I would forget. have had three. Th- I mean, you still wouldn't have won, but like, or two, not three, two, two sixteen. All of a sudden, you're like that much closer. So, um, obviously, yeah. you got to you got to participate in uh, Cassie's was her first tournament. Um, so I know you didn't win. You finished second place, which. Um, if you didn't win a tournament the other day, I'd make fun of you for getting second place again. Um, but that's why we have Brett here. Brett is here to make fun of you. So he grabbed the beer for this. Um, Brett, take over. Ask Eric some questions. Oh, I love Please. how you all just put me on the spot like that. First of all, Eric, where's your beautiful face, man? What's going on? Oh, uh, you know, I it's just not looking that beautiful right now. Yeah, so I, I decided to, to shit, shut it off, you know? I got it you. takes I a lot of work to, to make myself look. As good as I, I, I got it. Yeah, I get it, man. I got a prescription mirror myself, so I completely. <laughs> I had to make sure I was, you know, put together for this in, inaugural stream of mine. That makes so, sense. Yeah. Uh, no, dude. Uh, first of all, I got to give you credit on that game. Um, being first of all, I got to ask you a question. I mentioned this in the stream. <laughs> you have a tendency, and I, I noticed this. It's almost like you intentionally pick these characters that are like. <laughs> Terrible. Mediocre. Yeah, terrible. There you go, Brandon. No, terrible. Mediocre. mediocre. Mediocre is a better one. Subpar. Word. Subpar. My apologies. So I was just kind of curious. Is that the case? Are you just accidentally falling into the? I mean, you're in the TFC, right, with ACB. Yeah, you're yeah. In the women's tournament with the Kwame TFC I mean, with the ABC and XYZ. <laughs> get an STD. Right. With EYK. It's almost like if it's if I the think... character's too good, he's cheating. He's got to like give himself a handicap. That's exactly what it is. You know, I feel like it's just too easy for me to win with these OP characters. So I just, <laughs> I just have to dumb it down enough for me to be, uh, you know, challenged a bit. So that's the thing about Eric. He's always been one of the most humble people I know. <laughs> he is. Obviously, that's a joke to anyone yeah. that is listening. Oh, to this. of course. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I like, I, I, don't, I don't know. I like it more of a challenge. So I like mm-hmm. taking like, uh, I think, I don't know. I don't, I've done this a bunch of times, so I like taking subpar, I guess, characters and trying to make them work. Mm-hmm. And uh, you know what? Amy, Amy was a trooper. She she got by Hasib and Michelle that, you know, I didn't think I was going to get by. And then, yeah, that Zach was, that, that was too impressive. much for me. I don't think, I, I don't know if I watched that or not, but if it might not have even been streamed, but um, Hasib is on an absolute tear. Um, yeah. He is on, he's in my top 10 power rankings for this upcoming rankings. And while he is AA heavy, um, like I do think that in a neutral playing field with like, you know, like the round table coming up season four, Daniel Smith, the no bonuses. I, I think Eric, you would do really well in that tournament because you already have that experience of playing with um, mediocre candidates. And have you ever participated in those? And if so, how did you do? Uh the, the round table. I have. I have. The first time I did it, I think it was season two. I think I missed season one or something. Um, and I was still like super heavy into national groups. I think I did like three national groups or something like that with uh, with no bonuses. Wow. Um, I don't advise that to uh, newbies. Um, <laughs> was very hard to win. Um, but yeah, uh, last season, I don't know. I think I lost. Oh, yeah. I lost last season because... I mean, I, I, he was good. I think I lost to Neptune or something. I forget who it was ex- exactly. Maybe it was Zach Richowski. I forget. I get those two mixed up. Those time, are both but. good players. Those are both Republican route, Texas, Florida. Um, <laughs> yeah. So this is how I did it. So I did like Old South opening, classic Old South, Louisiana, North Carolina, 
Virginia and I was going to two pip Maryland, but instead I two pip Pennsylvania and it screwed it. And I was done for. <laughs> hey, Eric, have you ever, um, since you're Mr. National group, have you ever two pipped labor and environment as a Republican or two pipped big conservative Democrat? Like, um, like on accident, the opposite. I have not. I'm surprised I haven't done it. I did that. <laughs> not not <laughs> once. Not ever. Really. Not a single time in all the games you've ever played. That's never happened once. Uh, no. No, it hasn't, Brett. Thank you for questioning you. me on that. <laughs> I did that against Jason Casey in a tournament match. Oof. I'm like, oh, freaking crap. <laughs> oh, that's gonna, oh, that's got to be even worse. It's one thing to do it in the lobby. I got a tournament match. I, I won. I wanted to forfeit so bad. I'm like, I just made this post. <laughs> just I just made this everything. post about turn eight forfeiters, and I'm gonna freaking forfeit. I can't do this. So I lost. Luckily for me, um, it was one of the rare tournaments where I'd already lost like seven times, <laughs> so I didn't really care. So I just was like, ah, screw it. I already have a subscription. I don't need free candidates. Like I'm just gonna, I'm gonna wait till turn nine. Go all in in Montana. And then, and then, oh yes, that's the way to do it. <laughs> but that's yeah, that's to my man. question. Cassie, do you have any questions for Eric? Not, not that I can think of. Um, I was, I was Eric. I was going to try to give you a little credit. I went back and I looked at my original sign up post, and I think you were like, you're pretty <laughs> deep into sign up. So I was going to try to give you that like kind of credit for picking Amy. But if you're if you're known for picking, um, I will use the word mediocre uh candidates um that I, I really can't help you I, I tried no you're you're good Cassie I think I on the sign up so I was like hey I think it was the week Jill Biden came out or something it's like hey can I use a uh, Jill instead and you're like no I was like yeah that's uh, fair. I don't <laughs> think I remember seeing that, no yeah. no what you did ask me you asked me if, if you could use Crooked Hillary because you yeah, came out after like the that. start of this. <laughs> um, and I told you no, because I wanted to leave a couple of free candidates in there for, for people, people like myself who don't subscribe. Um, it pays to subscribe. I've, I've heard <laughs> yeah, this. And, I, and since, and I mean, I used to be a hardcore non-subscriber. Like I was proud of the fact that I had it, but I have purchased a couple of candidates since, since um, I wanted to get involved with more more tournaments and the, the new the, the mm -hmm. free ones were just getting pulled in way too quickly so i was like all right fine well two things so i've, I've paid so, a couple for it. i know i'm interrupting i'm bad about that but um i have been really bad about streaming lately just because i've i really haven't like st stuck to a set schedule but wednesdays i do wacky wednesdays on youtube and i usually give out one or two free candidates um you i tr i want to do your wacky wednesdays now i'm gonna interrupt you i work very early in the morning that, Brendan. for school <laughs> And your Wacky Wednesday is my bedtime. Night if night. your Wacky Wednesday was an hour earlier, I'd totally be in there more often than I am. Sounds good. Oh, hint, hint, Brendan, she wants you to move it back. Well, and I've talked about moving it up. And every time I do, um, you guys who weren't maybe watching the live stream, but like Brett and Cassie and I were like making sure our technology didn't suck because like we're all newbies at the streaming stuff. And we were talking and I was basically on mom duty, which doesn't work. And <laughs> so his bedtime is like right when Cassie wants me to stream. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's kind of like, you know, happy wife, happy life kind of thing. So no, I, I get I, it. Yeah. I, it. I, um, yeah, I, I think I just need to like suck it up and just do it one night a week or, or just kind of once in a while, like a Saturday afternoon or just some random things, but yeah, but yeah. It, it does help to have like a couple good candidates. Um, that Ronald Reagan eighty four definitely a good mm. Republican candidate. Um, you know, Jill Biden. You guys talked about her, but I do think that you know Easter egg is coming out tomorrow, so be on the lookout for Easter. Oh, egg. don't don't tell me it's the Easter Bunny. It's we're not getting the Easter Bunny. Okay, um, thank you. It, next year they're going to have a Republican and Democrat Easter Bunny, but this year they're getting a Golden Egg, which is an independent character. Um. And then, you say you're going to run for president as an egg. You're going to run, and you're going to do an excellent job. You're going to, you're going to you know. Where's Jason Casey when you need him, right? For those puns. <laughs> um, but basically, yeah, it, it's not all that's cracked up to be, you know, being with all these puns. Um, but no, it's an independent candidate. And then going forward, they're going to have some candidates like Bernie Green, <laughs> candidates like Bob Dole, um, and then some updates. Okay update to some candidates like a um a teddy roosevelt is coming stacy abrams 
So let me just oh, up, answer in the updates. Game. Okay. So kind of like what they did with the old Reagan, they were just, I wouldn't say buffed. These aren't necessarily buffs, but mm-hmm. also like, like for example, one of the updates that I know um, has been talked about, it's not final, is Bill de Blasio. Um, Eric, you know, is Mr. National Group and Bill de Blasio. What's the first thing that you think of when you hear labor, 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 labor and environment? And then when you, when you, when a candidate comes out and there are these bonuses, like, I don't know about you guys, but like what I do is I compare like, okay, FDR manufacturing, you know, oh, well, how can this person, you know, AA, Abraham Lincoln, how can this person be less than that or more than that or blah, blah, blah. And so labor, it kind of throws everything off. So I think what they're talking about doing is reducing his labor from like 40% or whatever it is down. I think it's actually 50, isn't it? 50% down the 40% 40% or 35 and then giving a boost to all of his state group. So like giving him like 10% more high tech, 10% more just to make him, you know, maybe more of a less of a unique candidate. But then if you think of someone like a real, like a 50% labor environment, like a Jill Stein or like a, um, you know, maybe even a Bernie Sanders, but I'd say that Bernie 2024, he's pretty crazy already too. 50% youth, 40% labor. Um, so uh, I believe Jake on him as a VP, get that stupid high town account. Yeah. Or can you do Joe Biden? High town again. What'd you say? I, what, Mich- what can you, so what would a Bernie 2024 with a Joe Biden VP look like? It'd be yeah, town and gown and swing, wouldn't it? I'm going to pull that up. And, and well, women, yeah. town and gown, swing and women. Are you trying to make the labor big or are you just I'm just trying to think of I mean if you're thinking the biggest national group that I can think of is uh uh it would be uh the buffed Reagan with uh Kelly and Conway. I think that puts you at 70% on big conservative. Yeah, 58 and 50. That's that's pretty good. Um but if you, I think if you want to like max out labor, you want to put, uh, you want to take De Blasio and put Eugene Debs on him as a VP. I think you can get up to like sixty percent or something. So Bernie twenty twenty four with a with a Jill Biden VP, like Eric was saying, sixty percent town again, thirty two percent women's twelve percent swing. So while that's more well rounded, I think I actually like you guys have probably seen this one too, Eric. I'm sure you have too. The uh, Bernie 2024 with a Bernie Sanders vice president. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen that one? Yeah, I've seen that one. 38% high tech, 38% manufacturing, 52% town and gown, 50%, wow. 35% labor, 10% AA, neutral swing. So <laughs> I don't know, guys. Uh, George Washington's also pretty fun. National or not, so. And you know, something I've noticed now, this is if you get really, really ambitious, if you get, because he's neutral on youth, if you get the three main national groups and youth, you're over 200K in pure cash every time. I'm not saying any like, good player would let you get that far, but it's nice to do in the lobby sometimes. Yeah. Oh, it's <laughs> it's fun to play in the lobby, different strategies for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I want to say thank you so much to Cassie for hosting this. Congratulations to Eric and uh kudos to brett for uh finally hopping on a stream uh we'll get we'll get you more in the stream game soon eric you're gracious in defeat we appreciate your time as always um yeah no it, problem does anyone else have any final last words here because i have a fun just fact big... for you guys oh what did you know i have a fun fact for you guys go yeah. ahead do you know that uh, me and cassie live in the same town do you know that we did and you guys have never met up like i i drove like we have it I drove like three hours to go meet Bryce Hawkins. <laughs> Man, Eric and I are really slacking. Yeah, that, that trip's on like my agenda too. Ten minutes from each other, probably. Yeah. I, Everything I mean, in Madison is ten minutes. I mean, I'm probably just not worth visiting, you know, so I understand. Well, <laughs> you, we're, we're, so Don't make me sound bad. Cassie I'm just works, kidding, Cassie. Cassie just works kidding. in education. Where do you work, Eric? I work, uh, I'm an accountant. And I work remotely, so I work at home. <laughs> okay, so Cassie, have you done your taxes yet? I did. Okay, I was going to say, TurboTax is probably way cheaper and better than Eric could ever do. But if I mean, we went to a guy, but it wasn't Definitely. Eric. <laughs> oh. Sorry. 
It's okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> No, because we, I, I mean, I got married this, this last year. So my husband and I were like, oh, we don't want to, we don't know what our taxes are going to be. We're just going to make someone else do it. Yeah, that's no worries there. That's fair. That's fair. Hey, uh, Eric, what's your record all time versus Zach? Brett was curious. Perfect. Yes. Thank I you think, for asking that. I think now it's like six and two, I would guess. Okay. Seven and two, maybe. So he's, I, he's I, I actually, yep. Times. But you have the I actually think I asked Zach this the other night and he showed me a screenshot from like months ago. He's like, yeah, I beat him once. And I was oh. like, yeah, you probably pissed him off and he <laughs> hasn't let you win since. So, but no, the, the other time was like super close. I think, I think mm. I messed up or something, but he destroyed me this time. Like I'll give him credit. He, he, uh, he played he he me. a flawless game. Um, mm-hmm. I think the only thing that he did that you could say was wrong or not wrong, but like conservative was locking Michigan. He didn't have yeah. to do that. But like that, I tell you what, that's not out. That's not out of the range of possibilities. There <laughs> is yeah. a Michigan steal. So um, I don't think you would have gone all the way. But if if you go like like the seventh pip and, and you just waste all that money and he locks it, it looks yeah. like a, it looks like a genius move. So yeah, I'm usually a genius. So. Awesome. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> No, all good. Well, until next time, we're going to sign off uh, for everyone in the lounge. You can uh, message all these fine individuals and ask them all the questions that your heart desires. But uh, I hey, stay out of my inbox, Eric. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I uh, need to get going. Um, it's Easter Sunday. Happy Easter to everybody. And until next time, we'll catch you guys in the next 270 stream. Yep.